Thank you, President Officer. I spend a great deal of my time waxing lyrical about how my patch of Aberdeenshire is the best kept secret in Scotland. And now that the people of Aberdeenshire East have put their trust in me to represent them, I'll make a point of doing that in Parliament whenever possible. I need to spend a lot of my time working with my constituents to put our beautiful corner of Scotland on the map. I've long said we need to shout louder about our unspoilt coastline, the tremendous and varied wildlife that populate it, and our fishing rivers like the Deverin, the Yugi, and the Eithen. Now, a member's first speech often references local persons of note, be they from history, literature, or otherwise. And of course, you'll all know that Scotland International, in Mintlaw's own, Kim Little, was recently announced as BBC Women's Footballer of the Year. She's ours. In our patch, we've also got a few links to some very significant literary figures, like Bram Stoker, for whom Slane's Castle in Cruden Bay was the inspiration for Dracula's Castle. Don't let anyone tell you different. And Lord Byron was born in Gicht, near Methlick. And then there's Flora Gary, the Buchan poetess, who was a new dear quine. But for me, it's not so much the historical figures that will tempt visitors to Aberdeenshire East, but the landscape, the wildlife, and the Afa fine folk who abide there. But since we're looking to the future in this debate, I'd like to think that a future member for the constituency making their first speech in this chamber, maybe someone yet to be born, might lead their speech by making a rather big deal about Aberdeenshire East's most important political figure, a person whose links to the area might warrant visits from hordes of tourists to Stricken, perhaps. Of course, I'm talking about my predecessor, the former MSP for Aberdeenshire East and former First Minister for Scotland, Alex Salmond MP. If I can make a small prediction that a future MSP for Aberdeenshire East might even lay claim to him being one of the premier architects of the independent Scotland they now enjoy. This independence might be the only state of affairs that this future representative has ever known. And they might marvel that this was not the case back in 2016 when his constituency was handed over to a certain Gillian Martin. Well, here's hoping so anyway. So it's to my constituency in my home of Aberdeenshire East that I look to imagine the future as we take Scotland forward. And already within our programme of government, I see areas of development that will make enormous changes for the betterment of the lives of my constituents, not in decades, but within this parliamentary session. My area is set to be one of a fair few rural communities that will see their business, educational and leisure life immeasurably enhanced by the provision of the promised 100% broadband provision across Scotland. This, I hope, will mean the expansion of existing businesses, new enterprises and a subject close to my heart as a working mother an increase in work flexibility and moves to different and more efficient ways of working, more family-friendly ways of working. Aberdeenshire East is also going to be benefiting hugely from the completion of another key connectivity and infrastructure project, the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route. At last, we've waited so long for it. Travelling across the constituency, I see massive progress on this day on day, progress not made whilst this was put into legal limbo during a Labour and Lib Dem Scottish Government. The completion of the AWPR will cut those commut commuting journeys we struggle with considerably and open up our corner to a world of commercial possibilities. I also look forward immensely to Aberdeenshire East families enjoying their doubled free childcare provision. A quick peer into this crystal ball that I appear to have might see a Newmacker family that looks a bit like mine when my kids were wee, but differs in, in that Unlike me and my husband at the start of the millennium, they don't have to struggle financially to be able to afford childcare so that mum can go back to work. I'm reminded of an interview I read with the former Norwegian Prime Minister. He was asked, what is the secret to Norway's economic success? The journalist was no doubt expecting an answer which featured oil and gas, but he got this response, it's our women in the workforce. The Norwegian Premier went on to explain the secret to Norway's economic success was the fact that free childcare allowed so many women back to work after maternity leave and that their economic contribution made Norway as affluent as it is. I also look forward to seeing our largest town, Inverurie, opening the, its, the biggest new health centre in Scotland 
and a new state-of-the-art Inverurie Academy campus being built under the Schools for the Future project. The same project that saw the fabulous new Ellen Academy being opened last year, a school who will not forgive me if I don't mention them since I'm a former pupil. And I look forward to an Aberdeenshire East with more affordable housing and other initiatives that can attract public sector workers to live and work in our great towns like Turriff, Old Meldrum, Newborough, Balmedy, Fivey and others. With our First Minister outlining further action in the recruitment of GPs and diversifying and widening primary care services, we are addressing issues that concern my constituents, my constituents directly. And with the recruitment of these skilled workers from out with our area, I'd also confidently like to predict that once they arrive in our incredible Aberdeenshire East, that they will never want to live anywhere else and they, like me, will be waxing lyrical about it too. <laughs>